But first, Anthony Albanese promised in opposition that if he became Prime Minister, he'd hold a royal commission into the handling of the pandemic. Mr Albanese, there have been widespread calls for a royal commission to examine Australia's handling of COVID, especially to look to lessons to be learned for the future. If you win the election, will you hold such a royal commission? It is beyond doubt that you will need an assessment. Whether that be a royal commission or some form of inquiry, you, that will need to happen. It's been 16 months since Albanese became Prime Minister, but since then there's been no announcement on any inquiry or royal commission. In August last year, Albanese again committed to an inquiry, but now he couched that commitment by saying, once we're through the pandemic, have a listen. Uh, I've said consistently uh, that uh, once we were through the pandemic, it would be inconceivable, regardless of who won the election in May, that you would not have a proper examination. So despite Labor promising, and at times even demanding, a royal commission into the pandemic response when they were in opposition, now that Anthony Albanese has the opportunity to take this action, he says we can't have an inquiry because the nation is still dealing with COVID-19. COVID is still amongst us. And what I've said is that when we are confident that we're through uh, those issues, then we'll examine it. We're still seeking advice on that. And uh, that's something that I've also spoken with uh, the uh, state leaders about uh, because of uh, the obvious reasons in terms of the, the response. But we have still been dealing with COVID. We're still seeking advice. We're still dealing with COVID, speaking to state leaders. This is an illogical response. If we were still dealing with COVID, then understanding the lessons from the height of the pandemic would help us improve our response to the virus. But also to push off an inquiry until we're not dealing with COVID is nonsensical because the virus isn't going away. It's here to stay like the flu, with new strains constantly emerging. The Prime Minister has barely mentioned the pandemic during his time in office. He wants to move on, perhaps pretend it never happened. But how can there not be an inquiry? Children were pulled out of, school, out of schools, and in Melbourne in particular, this was for an extremely long time. People were banned from stepping foot on beaches, which were closed along with public parks. Picnics, sport, activities, all banned. And you'll remember people were just fined for sitting on park benches, even breastfeeding mothers. Schools and outdoor playgrounds also closed. We were living in an authoritarian state, and that's not an exaggeration. It was, for that period of time, an authoritarian police state. It was the single most dramatic upheaval of our lifetimes. And it's only right that this extreme response is examined. We need to learn from it. And this is precisely the reason that Albanese had promised to have an inquiry or a royal commission into the pandemic response in the first place. But it seems that now the Prime Minister is concerned about what an inquiry might expose about how the Labor state governments handled the pandemic. The Finn Review's political editor, Phil Curry, writes that since forming government in May last year, Labor has been hesitant to establish an inquiry, arguing the nation was still dealing with COVID. He writes the opposition suspected the hesitancy was caused by wanting to protect the Victorian and Queensland Labor premiers, Daniel Andrews and Anastasia Palaszczuk, the two remaining leaders from the pandemic. But would... Albanese really break an election promise just to appease and protect Daniel Andrews and Anastasia Palaszczuk? It is inevitable that a royal commission would expose mistakes by governments. And yet it's essential that we discover these mistakes to be better prepared for the next pandemic. And the mistakes would be invariably on both sides of politics. The coalition was in power federally also in New South Wales, 
while Labor was in power in Queensland, Victoria and WA. You have to look at what we've already had royal commissions or commissions of inquiry into just in recent years. The robo-debt scheme, defence and veteran suicide, national and natural disaster arrangements, violence, abuse, neglect of people with a disability, aged care quality and safety, misconduct in the banking system, the protection of children in the Northern Territory, trade union corruption, and it goes on. Some of these, of course, are very worthy topics, but others had less substance and were purely a political exercise, and that was on both sides of politics. None of these royal commissions, I would argue, are more worthy than the handling of the pandemic. How can the Albanese government truly argue that a royal commission into the robo-debt scheme is more important than one into the handling of the COVID pandemic when the pandemic affected every single Australian, put them out of work or took them out of school, shut down their businesses, and according to the latest figures from the World Health Organization, killed 22,800 Australians and infected 11.5 million of us. This Royal Commission isn't a political exercise. It shouldn't be. It's not about blaming Daniel Andrews or Scott Morrison. It's about examining the role of federation, the power and interaction between the states and the federal government, the procurement of supplies, the role and use of the defence force, health mandates and orders. All of these topics are essential to examine and there may be constitutional recommendations. The power play between the Prime Minister and the Premiers, their different decisions relating to the health and movement of citizens, these interactions were all unclear. They needed to be worked out as the pandemic progressed and they're questions that still need to be dealt with. But we need to understand and examine the fallout also in education and mental health. How the health departments are set up, who's in control, of health warnings and homeschooling and teaching and how it should all operate and when. And then the health response itself needs to be examined. Vaccine mandates and masks and other health orders. Do the stay-at-home orders work? Are the rules where people couldn't exercise outside, for example, is that necessary in future pandemics? And what about travel bans and border closures? and border closures not just internationally, but between states. These are difficult but critical questions that we can't shy away from. The country needs answers about how things happened and why. And the country also needs guidance about what we can improve in the event that there is another pandemic, which many scientists say is inevitable. There are rumblings that Albanese may announce a judicial inquiry that only examines the former coalition government's response. Now, the advantage of a royal commission is that it would compel the states to participate, but a judicial inquiry wouldn't have that power. It's worrying if Albanese is truly concerned about hurting Daniel Andrews' feelings, or maybe he's under pressure from the Labor premiers. An inquiry that only examined the federal government response for the sake of politics would be a grave mistake. This is far more important than politics. In any case, the coalition and Labor would both be under scrutiny. A royal commission would likely uncover information both sides of politics would be uncomfortable with. But this isn't a reason for the entire country not to learn the lessons from the pandemic. Former Prime Minister Scott Morrison told the Finn Review, told Phil Khoury, that any inquiry that did not have the powers to compel current and former state officials to appear would be obsolete. He said throughout COVID, we established an ongoing Senate inquiry to provide transparency and accountability in real time and identify important lessons along the way. He said any serious retrospective inquiry that seeks to go back over this ground 
would be obsolete if it didn't require equal attention and involvement of all state and territory governments who shared in Australia's response to this one in a 100 year event. Now, no doubt this type of Royal Commission would be an enormous undertaking. By the very nature of a Royal Commission like this, it would need to run for two or three years at a minimum with reporting dates for different aspects and potentially more than one commissioner. It's a complex area. But such a consequential period of our history deserves this level of scrutiny and examination. The decisions that were made need to be dissected. The officials who made them need to be interrogated and we need detailed recommendations for future pandemics so that we do emerge from this period stronger and wiser. The stated reason Albanese has given for not calling the Royal Commission that we're dealing with COVID still is so ludicrous that it makes you wonder if it's a case of Sir Humphrey Appleby's famous advice in Yes, Minister, when he said, Minister, two basic rules of government Never look into anything you don't have to and never set up an inquiry unless you know in advance what its findings will be. Now, it's worth noting that Senior Cabinet Minister Katie Gallagher was the chair of that Senate inquiry that Scott Morrison mentioned, the Senate Select Committee on COVID-19. This was set up in 2022. And it recommended, and I quote, the committee recommends that a royal commission be established to examine Australia's response to the COVID-19 pandemic to inform preparedness for future COVID waves and future pandemics. Future COVID waves there. It also recommended that the Australian government publicly release all previous and future minutes of the Australian Health Protection Principal Committee to promote transparency and accountability and provide the public with access to the health advice that informs government decisions around community safety, livelihoods and personal freedom. Now, this is the fascinating thing. These two recommendations were not endorsed by the coalition. They were not recommendations from the then coalition government. These were Labor recommendations. And it included having the Royal Commission, not just for future pandemics, but to advise on further strains of COVID-19. I asked Katie Gallagher's office today if she still agreed with her own recommendations and if she'd been lobbying her own government and the Prime Minister for this Royal Commission that she formally called for. As of going to air, we haven't received a response. If we do, I'll bring it to you tonight. But surely this wasn't all pure politics to attack the government of the day. Surely this wasn't just about attracting a newspaper headline. Because such an exceptional and life-changing period in our history, the most life-changing since World War II, merits a thorough and serious royal commission as Albanese and his ministers recognised in opposition. Mr Albanese, there have been widespread calls for a Royal Commission to examine Australia's handling of COVID, especially to look to lessons to be learned for the future. If you win the election, will you hold such a Royal Commission? It is beyond doubt that you will need an assessment. Whether that be a Royal Commission or some form of inquiry, you, that will need to happen.